afternoon to all of you. Uh, thank you for coming to this session, uh, relax session, but uh, local message santai session. So about uh, simple petrochemical petrochemical technology, which is the production of uh, light on the fins. I'm uh, Muhammad Zakwan Zaini. You may call me uh, Encik Zakwan or Mr. Zakwan. Uh, yes, correct. Previously, I'm a chief production engineer at Dr. Chemical uh, Titan Malaysia, Pasir Gudang Plant for three and a half years. And then I jump, I jump to another field, which is engineering education. Uh, and then uh, teaching diploma student uh, for this at Polytechnic teaching Sarawak, uh, far away from uh, Malaysia Peninsula, lah, which is Sarawak, still under uh, MCO, PKPB. <laughs> okay. Uh, production of like olefins, uh, Honestly, to me, uh, okay, for my opinion, light oil is a simple one. Uh, light oil fins, your alkene, your carbon double bond, right? Double bond. Okay, so I will start with the. Wait, wait, sorry, sorry. Okay, okay light oil fins. Eh? Light oil fins, uh, examples of your alkene, uh, ethylene, propylene, butane, and so on. Uh. However, uh, light oil fins. Uh, may, may mostly focus more on the ethylene and also propylene lah, uh, like 3D picture at the right. This one is a propylene, okay, and the bottom one is your ethylene, okay, your double one. Okay, and then... Well, uh, Zakuan, hold on for a while. Uh, yes, yes. I want to check with the students because uh, actually I have two devices. One is showing light olefin page and the other one is actually showing production of like olive in the introduction page so oh, uh, I see, okay. i'm wondering if uh, the students uh, what what page are the students looking at at the moment like olive in the olive okay you can see the like olive in page all right okay perfect then that's fine okay so uh, okay Zappa, you can proceed okay, sure thank you okay so like olive fins, eh? like olive fins. Uh, Okay, in Lotte Chemical Titan, there's not uh, there are then under plant uh, other than the light olefin plant, uh, like polymer plant and also the aromatic plant, uh, which I will be show you in the next slide. Uh. However, okay, uh, products from the light olefin, which is the Italian propylene, will be undergoes the poly polymerization to be polyethylene or polypropylene. And then you may also from okay. Italian will be form another product which is Italian chloride or Italian oxide. It's mainly product from the uh, like olefin product will be used in packaging, plastic processing, construction, and textile industry. Lah. However, for, for propylene, the demand currently is quite high. Lah. That's why they are focused more on the polypropylene product which is used in the automotive industry lah. and also. Uh, users of the propylene and the Okay, a short intro about light olefins. What is light olefins? Like something that like something that ringan, in Malay we call ringan, right? So usually contain uh, carbon with two carbon atom or three carbon atom. Sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, at Lotte Chemical Titan. There are almost around 13, 13 processing plant. However, for cracker plant, sorry, for light olefin plant, around uh, three main, uh, three main olefin plant, and with total around three and four, sorry, for total of four, uh, four processing plant. However, they categorize it into three lah, three major uh, light olefin plants, which is the first one, is the steam cracker plant. Steam cracker complex plant, uh, licensed technology by Stone and Webster. Uh, currently, uh, the Stone and Webster licensed technology acquired by Technic Production. And then the second one is uh, fluidized catalytic cracking of NATA, which means the petrochemical FCC, uh, licensed technology by Kellogg Brown and Root from USA. And then the final one is uh, Olefins Convention Unit, OCU Metathesis. The, sorry, the Dehydrogenation, uh, dehydrogenation of uh, C4, which is the butyl, uh, butylene, yes. Uh, license technology by Lamas technology. Lah. 
all those three plant uh, located in Pasir Gudang plant. Uh, as you can see here, there's another plant uh, located at Tanjung Lasak, uh, which majorly focus more on the polymerization. Uh, polymerization, which is a polyethylene also. Uh, polyethylene, polyethylene. Okay. For today's session, for today's session, we focus more on the steam cracker complex. Uh, what is steam cracker? I will be discuss in the next slide. And then a short intro about the petrochemical FCC to less catalytic cracking. Uh, if you know the FCC usually uh, usually uh, usually located at the refinery called as the RFCCU. You see through less catalytic cracking which mainly focus using feed from the heavy component. Therefore, the fluid scattered cracking of NAFTA, which is the petrochemical FCC, is the new technology that we will discuss later, not discuss later, I show you to you later. However, for this today's session, we will mainly on the steam cracker complex. Okay. For those from Johor, if you know Pasiguda, it's like my hometown, okay? You try your best there if you got the chances. Okay, what is steam cracker complex? Uh, usually, it use the pyrolysis concept, the thermal decomposition of your product or thermal cracking process. Uh, usually, using a furnace uh, in order to produce like hydrocarbon. Okay, and then uh, for thermal cracking process, it's a non catalyst process of thermal decomposition of hydrocarbon. Uh, is performed at a very high temperature. Yes, furnace usually uh, usually uh, operated at high temperature, around 750 to 900 degrees Celsius, approximately at normal pressure. Okay. okay. Uh, and then the fit is NAFTA, one of the uh, petroleum products. If you know the products from the crude distillation unit, we have kerosene, gasoline, diesels, uh, uh, light gas and there's another one called is F nafta lah. Usually nafta is the uh, quite uh, the aliphatic hydrocarbon, the cyclic structure also. Uh, range around C C and this is even longest uh, longer aliphatic hydrocarbon chain. Uh, okay, string cracker complex also using fit C four or C five mixtures, as well as uh, C two until C three recycle. Okay, C four C five mixture means that. Uh, alkane that contain uh, four number of carbon atom or five number of carbon atom. Alkane also alkene product, uh, which is uh, butane or butylene, pentane or pentane, as well as C two C three mixture usually uh, C two ethane or C three propane. However, uh, current okay current situation C two and C three are at high high uh, sorry high profit uh, quite profitable. Therefore, usually C2 or C3 recycle, we uh, sorry, lotte chemical time will be reduced, like, reduced to use. Focus more on the NAFTA because the price of the NAFTA currently at a uh, very economical price. So it's quite uh, useful to use NAFTA as a fit, as well as C4 situation. Okay. Pyrolysis, uh, if you, if you, sorry. If you take your FYP one with certain lectures, they are focusing more on the pyrolysis, which is uh, pyrolysis. Okay. Okay. This is the NAFTA cracker complex number two. Okay, number two located at the Lotte Chemical Titan, uh, Pasir Gudang plant. So as you can see in this slide, in this picture, the be this big uh, like the giant uh, multiple story building. This is the furnace. Uh, in lay we call it relau, tapi usually much more convenient to say it produce in order to happen uh, the breaking process. Otherwise, uh, it's the downstream or separation separation process. Okay. All right. Okay, this is the overall process flow diagram for the steam cracker complex located uh, at the NAFTA cracker. Zakuan, can I ask yes. question? Sure, doctor, sure, never so, mind. Uh, okay, uh, my question is, 
sure. uh, for the, the furnace, uh, how do you power the furnace? Is it by electric, electric, electrical power, power, or by something else? Because uh, the temperature is very high. Yes, yes, yeah, understood. Okay, a quite interesting question. Okay, for your information, uh, out to all our audience. Uh, okay, the furnace will be uh, ignited and sourced by the fuel gas as a burner. So we're using full gas, full gas as a source of the burner, and then the burner will be ignite all those flames at the high temperature, and then the cracking happens at the coil of the furnace. That, that let I show you in the next uh, next few slides. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. This is the overall process flow diagram of the steam cracker complex. Uh, I guess you all you already learned. Uh, process control and instrumentation, and a very well known about process flow diagram as well as uh, piping and instrumentation diagram. Basically, this is the basic process flow diagram of the stream cracking complex. Uh, so we start from the furnace, and then going into the quench system. Quench system usually you focus more on the cool down, cool down the crack gas, cool crack gas, crack gas. And then to the downstream separation, caustic wash uh, after quench system going to caustic wash tower and also dryer system in order to to remove all those uh, moisture content hydr hydration in your crack gas. And then finally uh, go into the uh, separation separation train system or separation process. Lots of distillation column, yeah, lots of distillation column. The proponizer, uh, the methanizer, the butanizer, stripper, and also rectifier. Okay, there's another another selective hydrogenation unit called a C3 hydrogen unit, and also C3 hydrogen unit, and also a compressor. Okay, so if you remind, keep in mind your mind. If you want to transfer your your gas, you need to use compressor, not Farm, okay, uh, that's the favorite question by your lecturers at UTM. Until now, I repeat, remind this, uh, this punch, this, this key keyword question. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Uh, 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 by the way, uh, the students that you are presenting now, uh, is also at the same time doing final plan design project. Yeah. So that's it for you. Okay. Bye. Okay. 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 Good luck for your plan. This is a, it's a, a very wonderful journey for me during my final semester. <laughs> okay, I still remind, I still keep in mind in my mind, uh, my struggleness. <laughs> okay, okay, your plan is there. Okay, and then uh, after hydrogenation, the crack gas will and the sorry, the light component of your crack gas will goes into the the, the famous one, the cold or chilling tray, the heart of your. Uh, Italian cracking process. Yes, the call box. Okay, it's not your ordinary call box. It's totally different from your ordinary call box, uh, not your refrigerator. But the pro the process itself is like uh same as a refrigeration. Okay, same so. Then you're cooling down your crack gas until uh my sub zero temperature minus hundred and sixty degrees Celsius, uh, until you get the liquid product from your crack gas paper. Okay. Then one, I will discuss uh, details in the next few slides. Uh, so finally, our, our, our product, our main product, which is the propylene and also tiling. Okay. Why I love steam cracker complex? It's easier, easier. Just, you know the product is hydrogen, methane, uh, C2 mixture, which is ethane or ethylene, uh, C3 mixture, uh, propane and so propylene. C4 mixtures and also C5 plus plus lah. Uh, usually, uh, which is we call it as the RPG, raw pyrolysis gasoline, that we send into the other derivative processing plant, uh, like BTX and also aromatic plant. Okay. Uh, what is furnace? Uh, this is the typical schematic diagram. Uh, how how it operates basically. Is is uh, okay in a furnace. Usually we have burners in order to in order to undergo the cracking process. Okay, 
usually the furnace divided into two zones. So we got the two uh, cracking zone. Okay. And then our feet, which is the naphtha feet. Oh, sorry, sorry, my, my, my bad. Okay. Our naphtha feet okay, will be injected, will be flow into the this section first. The, the first section we call it as the convection. You, you have learned your heat transfer, right? Heat transfer, the convection, radiation, and conduction. Okay. Okay. At the convection, the first one, eh, call it as the convection. At the convection, the feed will be preheated, preheated before entering the, the radiant. Okay, radiant. Okay, the, the, okay, the feed will be goes flow into the uh, sorry, tube. Okay, tube, tube. I forgot already, maybe around. Okay. Not stainless steel, carbon steel, carbon steel, carbon steel tube inside the furnace, and then the preheated feed will be undergoes the cracking process at the radiant section, which is located at the bottom of the uh, zone, where the furnace will be lighted up until uh, until seven fifty to nine hundred degrees Celsius. And then the cracking, the cracking happens will be under happen at the occur will inside the tubing. Okay. Let's say NAFTA, NAFTA around C6 and C7. Okay, how the cracking happens? Okay. How the cracking happens usually. Okay. Let's say cracking happen at this chain. So this uh, long, long carbon carbon chain will be will be uh, cracked into uh, tiny or small carbon atoms lah, which is usually around uh, in ethylene or propane or C3 or C2 as well as other gases hydrogen uh, C1 and other CO2 CO dan juga NOx SOX okay all uh, right the coin column means that we we undergoes the the how to say that yeah? okay the crack gas will be cooled down first by the coin cooler we, we usually the coin cooler is the linear exchanger in order we make the superheated steam uh, superheated steam SHP steam you know uh, SHP steam function to to run your steam turbine compressor okay. And then the influence will, will go to the down section. Okay. Okay, this is a typical 3D, 3D design uh, of uh, furnace, courtesy uh, Linda Engineering, where the stack is the your the stack itself is your exhaust from your burner. Okay, steam drum in order to make up your uh, superheated steam, SHP steam. LQE or we call it as a linear exchanger where the S exchange process happen between uh, boiler feed water go into the uh, SHP steam and then uh, convection section. Convection at the happen convection at the preheat, preheated the feed and the radiant cause is the cracking process okay decoking uh if you know what is coke coke usually is a carbon deposited during the combustion process during the cracking process usually if the process is in complete combustion they have formed some of uh, a soot or coking and then the coking will be present at the internal coil tubing of the cracking uh, that's why the, the decoking process Usually, it's a normal process in the furnace. Okay, question, question. Uh, the, sure. the, the, the cook that is being formed, is it in gases form or solid form? Solid form, Dr. Solid form. Okay. It's the carbon deposited. Cooking is the carbon deposited inside right. the coil. That's why in, uh, in normal uh, steam cracker or furnace, uh, they have some every shape, 
we doing the decoking process. Uh, okay, is there any chance that the cook uh, has uh, is present in gases form as well? So it will follow through the uh, go through the uh, subsequent process. Okay. Uh, Assumption by assumption, yes, because uh, the tiny amount of your uh, sorry, the tiny amount of coke will be present in the coin section in the next uh, this uh, in the first distillation column, which is we want to cool down the trapped gas. There are some uh, there are some coke deposited trapped in the strainer of the at the pump usually at the pump, and uh, when we can't get the pressure of the liquid flows suddenly the pressure drops. And then we open, we, we sorry, we change the new pump and we maintain the old pump, we get coke inside the strain of the pump. Usually, yes, there's amount of uh, coke escape into the coin section. Normally, normally happen like that. They will be end up at the coin section. Okay. Okay. Then I show, uh, this is the convection section, gradient section. The convection section usually we want to preheat your hydrocarbon feed, which is naphtha, and then we go and then the feed goes into the radiation section, which is the tracking process happen, and then the transfer light changer, uh, TLE or SLE, where the the process exchange between the effluent gas, effluent crack gas, and also the boiler feed water go will change into the SHP steam. Uh, Okay, convection section, radiant section, burners, burners. Okay, burners. okay. what is coin section? Usually, okay, after the crack gas uh, from the furnace, it goes into the first, first uh, cool down section or the first distillation column section, we call as the quench oil or water tower section. Lah. Okay, coin section. So, uh, usually we want to cool down the first cool down crack gas from the furnace. We go into the quench, quench oil, or we call it as a primary fractionator. Okay, quench oil. And then further quench at the water quench. Okay. Usually, usually at the quench section, we mainly take out uh, the full oil. Uh, the full oil because uh, when the when the effluent crack gas from the furnace usually contain a lot of mixture of hydrocarbons. Uh, therefore, the first quenching, we will take the, the we take out the heavy component, which is usually a full oil. Full oil used for sorry, full oil is another type, sorry, another type of petroleum product, usually mainly for uh, using in the in the engine board and also. Full oil also as a uh, as the fuel burner for the for the boiler. If I'm not mistaken, uh, some of the places using full oil as a burner. Okay. For the quench water, usually we take up the raw pyrolysis gasoline, uh, which is a mixture of C5 or C8 hydrocarbon. Okay, raw pyrolysis gasoline we send in sorry, we send into the BPX plana uh, or aromatic complex, aromatic plant. It's still valuable. Sorry, it's still valuable because we we want to produce or make make a profit. Sorry, ah, sorry. Plan want to make a profit. Okay, therefore we send our raw pyrolysis gasoline into the BTX. Okay, in the quench section, in the quench section, uh, typically the quench oil exchanger. Is a series of exchanger as well as the also the quench water exchanger. There's lots, uh, lots of exchanger which is mainly, uh, mainly act as the reboiler for the distillation unit at the downstream unit. In the, in the next few slides. Okay. Compressor. How we how we want to deliver the crack gas? How we want to deliver by using a compressor plant. Eh? You still remind uh, during uh, thermodynamics, the Carnot cycle system, the Carnot cycle, and so on. That's the that's the key of your uh, key of the compressor system. If you want to start out the compressor, yes, the Carnot cycle, the Carnot cycle diagram, 
helps a lot. Uh, you will learn the compressor startup start shutdown by using the Carnot cycle in that he has learned in the thermodynamics. Okay. Basically, compressor, if you want to increase the pressure of the crack gas until the downstream unit around, okay, let's say from one kilo until uh, stay, okay, until 30 kilo. So, if you want to increase the pressure of the the pressure of the crack gas, you're using compressor. compressor. Uh, okay, at the compressor section, uh, okay, it removes gas condensate, uh, usually RPG like content. Therefore, the RPG will be sent back into the quench water tower and then before before sent into the aromatic complex plant. Okay. So he heavy gas, carbon oxide, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide also will be removed, uh, removed slightly at the compressor as well as the water condenser inside the track gas. Okay. Mainly, okay. The compressor itself will be driven by the steam turbine. There. Turbine, they get the steam from the SHP steam that they generated at the furnace, and then steam turbine compressor. Steam compressor. Turbine operated by SHP steam, okay, SHP steam around 105 kilo with temperature 470 until 500 degrees generated from the furnace at the at the exchanger. Uh, sorry, SLE or TLE, which is uh, which is located at the furnace. Okay, normally as we steam, you you can see it's a colorless, or oh, therefore colorless, and also it looks like your dry air. But however, the 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 feel of the hot of the as steam, you may feel it around five meter from the uh, steam pipeline. Uh, therefore, when temperature at four hundred seventy and five hundred degrees, you easily to get burn if you don't wear your ppe and so on okay this typical uh, typical compressor system uh, in pnid i take a pen idea pipe and solution diagram as you can see here the t for turbine and the right side is your compressor side so the crack gas from this suction drum is okay each compressor have several stages uh, usually in steam complex around five stages and each compressor have their own suction suction run line in order to trap all those condensate as well as uh, as well as your rpg rpg okay uh, this picture shows uh, during turn around period turn around means that the maintenance period like that you have your own car or motorbike you service uh, same goes to the maintenance period or turn around uh, the left hand side when the crane from memo team uh, lift up the one of the refrigerant compressor again refrigerant compressor we change to new one and then the right side uh, the the picture before the maintenance period is as you can see here the the white color, sorry, the white color compressor shows uh, stages. Show stages, let's say stage one, stage two, and so stage three from HP until NP and so and NPD. Okay. Okay. So at the processing plant, the compressor is, is a big, big and huge uh, unit operation. Okay, they located at the compressor house, so it's totally different from farm. Uh, totally different from farm. Okay. Okay. After after we compress the gas until stage one, until stage four, usually stage one. Uh, stage one we increase uh, pressure by by okay stage one. Let's say from one kilo until ten kilos. Stage two, from ten kilo until uh, 15, eighteen kilos. Stage three, sorry, 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 until uh, eighteen kilos until twenty five kilos. Stage four, uh, from twenty six until twenty two kilos. Okay, 
why got stages uh, because the compressor itself the gas itself need to increase the the pressure stage by stage that's it okay after uh, after the crack gas has been compressed we increase the pressure until targeted uh, targeted crack gas pressure the first uh, washing happens at the plastic wash tower okay plastic wash tower plastic wash tower plastic soda using plastic soda sodium hydroxide okay why why we use the caustic wash tower it function to remove impurities from the process gas lah process gas okay normally at the crack gas normally at the crack gas you got hydrogen c1 c2 mixture c3 mixture c4 mixture c5 and other however as i mentioned in previous uh, few slides we also got the carbon oxide, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, uh, salt, NOx, and uh, so H2S, the famous one in in a refinery or oil and gas sector, hydrogen sulfide. Okay. How we want to remove all those poisonous gas by using caustic wash tower? Yes, by using caustic wash tower. Yeah. Okay. Okay, student. You already seen the sodium hydroxide at the lab. I ask to all of you. If you know the sodium hydroxide at the lab, uh, just smile to at the knee at the webex. Or oh, if you not. Okay, it's okay. All right. Okay. Caustic soda. Uh, caustic. Uh, sodium hydroxide uh, in specific name we call it as, as, as a sodium hydroxide however in in plant in uh, yeah especially at the plant we call it as a caustic wash tower okay caustic wash tower how, how uh, we want to remove co2 co uh, h2s all those poison gas how we want to remove it uh, poison gas by contact to sodium hydroxide okay we contact it we got the uh sodium sodium carbonate economic sticker also sodium sulfide uh, sodium sulfide I forgot i forgot the equation already because uh, <laughs> forgot already okay why we want to wash our crack gas in order to protect our equipment especially uh for the hydrogenation reactor uh, because all those poison gas especially uh Acetylene, another thing is acetylene, okay, hydrogen sulfide. The catalyst inside the uh, hydrogen hydrogen unit reactor at the downstream section is uh, poison. Sorry, this poison gas, uh, this poison gas is the poison for the catalyst itself. Therefore, the catalyst will be the activate, activation of the catalyst will be diminished from the poison gas. Okay. Okay, dryer. Dryer is used to dehydrate water and remove any water moisture contact in the process gas. Usually, dryer is the adsorption process. It's happen at the surface out surface of your adsorbent, uh, not inside. Inside is adsorption. So adsorption, eh? adsorption. Usually consists of liquid dryer or gas dryer. Okay. Caustic wash tower. Okay. For caustic wash tower system, it mainly depends on the on the pressure of your crack gas. What will happen if the compressor itself will uh, sorry? What will be happen if the compressor itself have surging or process upset at the furnace system? Uh, so the the pressure of the crack gas can get transfer into the downstream system. What will happen at the caustic wash tower usually will be carried over to your dryer, to your exchanger before dryer and so on. This is the example, uh, the aftermath, after, aftermath, aftermath, aftermath during the process upset. One of the process upset, the caustic solution from the caustic wash tower 
uh, carry over carry over to the exchanger before dryer or reactor uh, as you can see in this picture there's a cover uh, sorry the salts deposited inside the inside the this heat exchanger as you can see at the right side is the channel head channel head of the heat exchanger channel head okay. okay sorry this channel head and the tube side this one the tube side okay this, as you can see in this picture, in this slide, uh, the salt deposited in the heat exchanger system. When the salt deposited, the differential pressure between upstream and downstream heat exchanger will be high. Uh, therefore, your heat exchanger will be blocked all, all crack gas flow into the downstream. Therefore, uh, we need to shut down the total process and need to take out this heat exchanger to clean it. Okay. Uh, Zakon, what what's the name of this heat exchanger? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, doctor, uh, it's a fit effluent heat exchanger for dryer. Fit effluent exchanger. Big effluent. Uh, fit slash effluent. Oh, effluent. Uh, fit effluent exchanger. So there's a there's tube inside this uh, thing? Okay, that's a tube. Uh, okay, this is another picture. Okay, as you can see here, when the channel head is removed, you got okay. The tube bundle still inside the the shell of the heat exchanger. How we want to take out the tube bundle using the bundle puller? Uh, as you can see. Here. Okay, so this, this is this is basically a uh, shell and tube, lah. Yeah, shell and tube. Yes, shell and tube. Okay, okay, shell and tube. Okay. Okay, the bigger one. Uh, okay. So when the tube bundle already taken out by the bundle puller, uh, the job, so the job done by the contractor. Okay. As you can see here in this slide, picture this slide. This is the the solid, solid particle amount of uh, salts, salt from caustic caustic wash towel yes and also other component which is like green oil will be solidified until you until it block the flow of the gas in the shell and also to the side how frequent do you have to dismantle this uh okay usually in a perfect condition uh the heat exchanger never never to be take down or shut down to cleaning okay. will be free from the caustic solution however during the process offset the pressure the pressure of the system will be goes down therefore uh, the solution from the caustic wash tower will be carried over okay. that's an accident accident incident area like incident. for me it's an incident also this is a rare case incident ah, yes. The abnormal and rare case uh, is the abnormal. But then, uh, if if there's no incident, you still need to dismantle this every fifteen months, right? Ah uh, yes. Ah uh, specifically during turn around, turn around, turn around. During turn around, we need to take down all uh, heat exchanger to be inspect by uh, Department of Safety and Health. Uh, yeah, to be inspect, to be inspected. In order okay, to, okay. in order to know the, the right? the performance of the heat exchanger around every 15 months every every three years usually uh usually at lotte chemical titan each uh, processing plant minimum three years uh, maximum around four years before uh shutdown for turnaround for maintenance period has been has been what has been scheduled by usually by do 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 uh, department of safety health uh, jkkp jkkp Maximum, uh, I guess around four to five years. Uh, you get the lot of chemical testing. You see, around every two years, every two to four years, need to take down. Tak macam lama sangat ke? Bukan, was it not the the rule is uh, fifteen months for the inspection? Or maybe sure. for, for his his exchange is not no need to be uh, not categorized under the uh, inspection of DOSH. 
Uh, usually, usually for heat exchanger, uh, not inspected by DOS. Okay, okay, got it. Unless, uh, unless the we got the permit, mesin tekan lah. Not, if not, if not, if not. Ah, PMP, PMP number. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I believe uh, heat exchanger is not categorized under the inspection of DOS, but you are doing this just to to improve your process condition. Yes, correct. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. And then after after the caustic wash tower dry, okay, we back into the process mode again. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Sorry. Okay. We get back into the okay. After we complete crack gas at the dry system, then we enter the downstream section. We call it as uh cold section. Cold section. Okay, I forgot to tell all of you. Usually the furnace starting from furnace until uh dry system, we call it as the hot section. Um while the other one, we call it as the cold section. Why cold section? Normally we operate under sub zero negative, sub zero temperature or around approximately around 30 degrees Celsius and below until negative. Okay. Okay. Uh, the crack gas uh, from the dry system will be entering the first section of the station so we call it as the depropionizer depropionizer okay depropionizer or dc3 if you know the d and the c3 it means that we want to separate your c3 usually d stands for separate uh, the easy way okay dc3 hp depropionizer high pressure and low pressure depropionizer so we want to separate your crack gas composition. You know that for the crack gas H2, C1, C2 mixture, C3 mixture, and also C4 mixture, C5 plus plus. Okay. At the HP, the overhead product is free from C4. Means that the okay, the cutting point, the cut point until the barrier between C2 mixture and C4 mixture. Means that the overhead vapor free from C4 means that hydrogen until uh, certain amount of C3. Okay, bottom essentially free from C2, which is hydrocarbon with two carbon atom. Because C2 we got the ethane and ethane right. Ah, uh, that why that's why we call it as C2 mixtures. And I think yeah, and then the bottom we can bottom free from C2 means that the overhead is H2, C1, C2S until C3 lah, C3, sikit. And then, okay. For the bottom product, free from C2. Means that C3S, C4S, C5++. Okay. Typical uh, distillation column, usually you separate it according to their boiling point. So keep in mind, uh, we want, if, we, oh, sorry, if this is in color, we separate according to their boiling point. Uh, okay, at the processing plant, if the name stripper, splitter, if the name of this is in color, the propanizer, the butanizer, all, all those names are the famous name. However, the principal one, the principal of the unification is the same, which is distillation column. Mass in equal to mass out, you separate according to their boiling point. Uh, that's it. You, I say, you just want, don't want to confuse with the name of the distillation column. The process is same. Just separate according to their boiling point. Yeah, okay. For low pressure depropionizer, so raw C3, uh, raw C3 with three carbon atoms, liquid distillate which is sent to the C3 hydrogen set. Okay. For C3, sorry, so for LP deprobonizer, the overhead will go into the C3 hydrogen set. C3 hydrogen set. 
and then bottom string flow into debit nozzle. As we know, the feed itself contains C3 mixtures, C4 mixtures, and also C5++. We separate the C3s from this LPD organizer. The bottom one will be the C4 mixtures, we call it mix C4, and C5 plus, we call it as RPG. We send to the organizer. Okay. That's why, when, why I love very much about uh, string cycle compact. The suppression is simple. It, you just mean, you just state the hydrogen first, C1, C2 as C3 mixtures, C4 mixtures, C5 plus plus. Okay, the boiling point towards the number of carbon atom will be increased also. Ah. Okay, the boiling point also bertambah. Okay. Higher carbon atom, higher boiling point. That's the simple one to understand in this uh, processing plant. So, we call it the BC3. Make sure for HP, we, can, we, we remove the C4 at the bottom, while at the LP, we don't want the C2 at the bottom, at the, at the product. Okay. Hydrogenation reactor, what is hydrogenation reactor? Usually, uh, the crack gas, as I mentioned in the previous previous few slide, the crack gas will be contain poison gas, okay, poison gas, and also another another chemical compound called as acetylene, acetylene, uh, and also methyl acetylene (MA), also propadiene, and also another lah. So hydrogen reactor function to convert acetylene, this one, acetylene, C triple bond, okay, C two H two, convert it into ethylene, also ethane. Uh, hydrogen comes with the presence of the catalyst and also heat. Okay, we convert it into ethane or ethylene. Same goes to methyl acetylene. Methyl acetylene. Okay. We convert it into propylene. propylene. Is a fixed bed reactor. Okay, fixed bed reactor. Uh, normally, at the this hydrogen reactor, or we call it a selective hydrogenation reactor. We focus on the delta P. Okay, delta P, and as, as well as the temperature of the reaction, because when the temperature is slightly high from usual, it means that uh, the performance of the reactor is quite high from and also quite abnormal sometimes we call it quite abnormal because uh, when the abnormal happen let's say high temperature the the ethan itself the ethan itself as well as the ethylene will be transferred in sorry will be converted into uh, c1 methane gas that we we do, do not want in our final product and also for ethylene, we'll convert into ethane. Uh, we target only ethylene, right? Uh, that's why the performance of the reaction will be taken into consideration during the reaction process. Okay. Uh, right. Poison gas, poison gas such as uh, hydrogen sulfide, hydrogen sulfide will be lower down the, the catalyst activity inside this reactor. Therefore, the performance in the uh, caustic wash tower system is very important during this during the system during the, during the process. We do not want the hydrogen sulfide to escape into this reactor. Therefore, when hydrogen sulfide attack the catalyst, will be slow down the activity of the catalyst and also the poison the catalyst itself. When the catalyst of the this reactor poisoned by this uh, hydrogen sulfide we need to uh, we need to uh, change the reactor to another standby reactor as well as we need to change the catalyst itself uh, 
to the catalyst, right? which is the cost of the catalyst one kilo around thousands of dollars, US dollars. That's quite expensive. Okay. Okay. You have learned reaction engineering, right? Uh, CRE. Uh, CRE. This example. I'm oh, sorry, say. Okay. Example of the fixed bed reactor. Uh, typical of plug flow reactor. Plug flow reactor. There's type of uh, type of plug flow reactor. Bubble cap, bubble column reactor, fixed bed reactor, and so on. Okay, C3 hydrogen reactor, same also with the C2 hydrogen reactor. Uh, however, it fo mainly focus on the MAPD that still present in the crack gas. Uh, therefore, uh, this MAPD will be tra will be converted into propylene in this uh, reactor. In this reactor. Okay. Back into the process flow diagram. So our crack gas already arrived until this proponizer as well as the reactor and also reactor okay this is a knockout round a simple vessel so the light light component hydrogen c1 and slightly c2 will go into the chilling grid cold box and the sorry the c3 and below goes into the demethanizer uh, so C four C five into the hydrogen. Okay, from the C two re hydrogenation reactor, we go into the knockout drum. Knockout drum usually a simple uh, vessel, simple vessel, uh, which is the separate hydrogen C one, C two, sorry C two, and the bottom one, sorry C two. If we already send into the addition into the deform. Okay. Then after the reactor, we go into the cold box, which is called as called as a chilling train. What is chilling train? Usually chilling train for easier understanding is a, a series of heat exchanger inside a cold box. Uh, that's it. Chilling train. It's an important part of the Italian plant, usually combined with demethanizing and see the flash drum, flash drum in order to separate hydrogen and C1. Okay. Chilintrin also, uh, Chilintrin also uh, will be found at uh, cry, cryogenic, cryogenic plant, okay, cryogenic plant, uh, ASU plant, air separating unit, in order to separate nitrogen and some oxygen. And also uh, LNG plant, LNG plant. Uh, there's this uh, typical of processing plant that using chilling train system. Loss of coal box there. Uh, okay. Is it uh, okay in chilling train or in a coal box? Chilling train in a coal box. We want to recover the hydrogen and also C1 uh, as different products through multi stream heat transfer. In multi stream heat transfer with refrigerant. Usually we cool down, uh, we we cool down the heat exchanger uh, using refrigerant. Refrigerant not not typical like R one three four A. No no no. It's basically we using C two refrigerant or C three refrigerant. C two refrigerant or C three refrigerant basically is a propylene product. Your final product, propylene product that's been cooled down. Uh, there's been cooled down until liquid when liquid goes into the vapor state loss of uh loss of cold uh, cold section cold section okay and then normally actually in train uh the compress and drag crack gas is cooled down until minus 100 cp to minus 170 degrees in the cold box in the cold box okay what is cold box? Basically, the brace aluminum head sensor located inside the cold box. Ah, this one. Okay. Brace aluminum head sensor is uh, like your ba sorry, bundle of your vehicle radiator combined into one package and then 
it looks like a brace and living okay and then inside the cold box will be filled with the perlite insulation in order to maintain the temperature inside the this uh, aluminum heat exchanger this one okay this one the aluminum okay, aluminum usually aluminum heat exchanger and then the outside of the heat exchanger in, inside the cold box this one cold box will be filled with the perlite insulation as the uh, insulation material and uh, pressurized first by dry nitrogen gas dry nitrogen gas because we do not want any oxygen content inside the insulation with, uh, due to uh, chances of the moisture content occurs is high at the insulation you want to remove any oxygen content inside the insulation by injecting or pressurized first by nitrogen gas yeah in the gases Okay, so this is an example of uh, the coal box, coal box by Linde and also Kobelco. Kobelco is one of the famous uh, manufacturer for coal box. Even at um, my previous uh, processing plant, the coal box uh, manufactured by Kobelco from Japan. Okay, inside a coal box, you see the manifold or the piping will be straight into the LX or the aluminum exchanger, as well as the drum for flashing purpose. For the separating flashing purpose, uh, maybe in and so out. And then the left hand side uh, picture inside of the coal box before okay before fill with the perlite. So the engineer and also technician from Linde will be oh, sorry sorry inspect the the vessel inside the coal box. Okay. Okay, demethanizer and also demethanizer prefectionator. Uh, prefectionator is is the basic uh, separation column before the demethanizer. Basically, if you look the PNID, the mechanical drawing, both are same. However, they separate it into two this uh, separated uh, distillation column in order to separate C3 and heavy material. Lah from C2 and Y2, uh, this function. Okay, basically the top of the product, the prefection heater is hydrogen and also C1. Uh, C1. Okay, and C2, C3, and uh, and the heavy component will be at the bottom. bottom. Overhead vapor from this C1 perfection meter contains especially no C3 material. It, we do not want any C3 mixture, uh, it, sorry, propane or propylene to be inside the cylinder because C3 already heavy component at the cylinder. Uh, at the cylinder, usually we want the light, lightest one, like hydrogen gas and also methane. C1 is methane. Methane or uh, cool gas. Also, we call it as methane rich gas. This both gas usually used as the uh, purging gas for dryer, dryer as well as uh, for burner in the furnace system. Okay. Then we move on to the demethanizer. This one makes a sharp separation between methane and ethylene. Methane, ethylene. Methane also. Okay. Deethanizer DC two. Okay, this C2 means that we separate uh, the fit into C2s and C3s mixtures. Uh, net overhead or C2 usually our C2s and the bottom one is C3 mixtures. Uh, C2 mixture uh, of ethane and ethylene will go into the C2 stripper with uh, C2 stripper which uh, Top product is our ethylene, our main final product, and the bottom product is ethane. Okay, when when goes into the seed uh, ethane and also ethane, sorry, ethane and ethylene, you check back the boiling point of these two chemical components. Uh, is it uh, almost the same? Uh, the sorry, the temperature difference, the boiling point is almost near to each other. Uh, you check first. That's why the C2 stripper usually is higher, 
entire distillation column around 100 and 118 if you are not mistaken 118 stages okay eating bottom from the stripper is pumped and recycled to the okay usually uh for eating yes we recycle back into the furnace or we convert it uh, we recycle back into the furnace same goes is all with the citrus stripper and rectifier uh the citrus mixture will go into the stripper first before rectifier however uh the polymer grade profiling product is taken off as a liquid side draw means that it's not the, the top product of the color no no is the side draw be around one or stage one or stage two stage three, stage three. okay side draw the net bottom liquid of stripper is recycled back to the LPD propanizer to remove any green oil produced in the citrus hydrogen unit. Okay. Debutanizer from L. Uh, okay. Hold on for a while. All right. Um, I, I just want to check with the students. Are they still here or not? <laughs> because everybody is uh, quite uh, very quiet, silence. Okay, Richard says, uh, gives a thumbs up. Okay, those of you who are still here, okay, hopefully you are focused and learning something here. This is uh, very related to your project assignment as well. Okay, 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 okay. just checking. Okay, so you are there and not sleeping. Eh? <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, uh, okay, okay, continue. That's right. I guess if they have an experience from internship, then mm -hmm. they will be listening. <laughs> uh, but but I believe maybe they are listening, but maybe yeah, yeah. Uh, they are trying to absorb because yes, uh, yes. a different person is actually uh, delivering it now. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, back to the slides. And then finally for the butanizer, the butanizer from the bottom uh, LP propanizer uh, usually contains of C4 mixtures and also C5++, uh, where we separated uh, C4 as mixed C4. RPG contain rich in C5 until C8. C8. Okay. okay, both product is valuable. Uh, both product is valuable. Then we send into the derivative plant. Derivative plant called as uh, usually BTX plant or Butadiene implant. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Both. Okay. Both mix C four and RPG is valuable. Is valuable. Still profitable. In order to process uh, as a uh, gasoline or normally at BTS will uh, at BTS plant we will producing benzene and toluene. And then okay, then we back into the process flow diagram. So from furnace, we go into the quench quench section in order to cool first cool down the crack gas. Uh, okay, the compressor we we compress our crack gas using the compressor stage one until stage four. Uh, we increase the pressure uh, stage by stage, uh, stage by stage. And then uh, go into the caustic wash tower. We want to wash our crack gas, remove any impurities, hydrogen sulfide, any poison gas, and so on. Okay, with the sodium hydroxide. And then dryer system, the crack gas undergoes uh, dehydration. We remove any moisture content, especially water moisture content, through the dryer system. And then Entering the depropanizer system in order to separate our, our, our composite component hydrogen, C1, C2 mixture, C3 mixture, C4 mixture, and so C5. Okay. Usually at HP, we, we do not want any C4 at, at, at the downstream plant because we want to send C4 into the LP formula. However, for LPG proponizer, we do not want we do not want C2. We do not want C2. Uh, therefore, HP sorry, HP HPD proponizer 
will be sent, but the overhead product of the HP formula will be sent into the cylinder in order to, to separate our raw hydrogen and also methane. Hydrogen is raw before we send into the pressure swing absorption or methanator. We call it a methanation process. In order to convert the C1 into hydrogen at the methanator. Normally, uh, for cracker cracker plant using oh sorry cracker one using PSA cracker two using uh, methanator, uh, but uh, normally it's much more convenient to use PSA for simple operability. However, the the cost of the pressure swing absorption of hydrogen much more expensive compared to the methanator reaction. Okay. And then uh, from the LPD proponizer as well as from the bottom of this knockout drum, knockout, knockout drum, we get the fit for the demetalizer refraction meter. Uh, demetalizer refraction meter, which contains C2 mixture and also C3 mixtures. At the demetalizer, we separate C2 mixtures and also C3 mixtures. At LPD proponizer, we, back, we get back to the LPD proponizer. Okay. The feed, sorry, the bottom product of the LPD proponizer mainly consists of C4 mixture and also C5 plus. Uh, C5 plus plus. Okay. When we you see the D in front, it means that we want to separate the component, which is example, D ethanizer. We want to separate ethane ethane products from the mixture of the gas uh, therefore we, we separate the ethane which is ethane mixture and then finally at the stripper uh, we separate our ethylene and also our our ethane same goes into the c3 stripper and rectifier we separate C3 propylene as a main product, while C3 propane we recycle back it goes back into the stripper, or somehow the C3 ethane we will also uh, recycle back into the compressor as a uh, makeup. However, normally we do not we do not uh, we do not run it uh, C3 recycle because the C3 itself is very valuable during the process. Okay. Okay, this picture shows the aerial view, eh? aerial photograph view of the NAFTA cracker complex number two, NC2 at LCTM. Okay, uh, this picture taken uh, at the height of around, if I'm not mistaken, around 100, and 100 meters from, from the ground level. Yes, I climb up uh, the distinction column, the C3 strip, splitter of uh, my plant, FNC plant. Uh, then and take this picture uh, from the aerial view, so you can see uh, the furnace at this side, the, the tallest one here, okay, X, the furnace, and then goes into the coin system, uh, water and also oil, okay, the compressor house, this one, the compressor house, compressor, okay, and then from the compressor, send into the caustic wash tower system, this one, okay, and then from the oh dryer, dryer, dryer is not available, lah. okay, and then from the wash system goes into the deproponizer first, HP and also LP, where the product, the lighter product from the DC3 HP straight towards into the demethanizer, okay, demethanizer. Demetalizer free fractionator and cold box are related to each other. This is the cold box one. Uh, you see the typical cold box, like a shoe box, <laughs> segi empat itu. Okay, and then uh, from cold box and DC one goes into the DC two, the ethanizer. Ah, uh, kecil kan, the smallest one. However, for C two stripper, yes, is the tallest one lah, around hundred meter. I sorry. 90 meter, 90 meter from the ground level here. 
ground level here, 90 meters. Stages around, if you're not mistaken, 90 to 100, 100, 100 stages, number of stages. And then for C3 product, send into the C3 stripper and also C3 rectifier. Okay, for your information also, uh, other like olefin production processing technology, uh, ethane cracker normally uh, normally pull up a construction at the United States, ethane cracker, because uh, the high amount of shale gas, uh, shale gas at US is high. Therefore, uh, most of the cracker plants switch into the Ethan cracker. Uh, Ethan cracker. Okay. Nafta catalytic cracking, like my previous uh, my previous processing plant, we, we target it to get the propylene. Propylene. Uh, we focus on the focus on the propylene product. Because I will be uh, show to you, discuss later. For resid to dust catalytic cracking, uh, basically at refinery. Uh, refinery at Kerti, refinery at uh, Pengerang, uh, Fresh Camp Pengerang, Rapid, as well as uh, Hang Yuan Refinery at Port Dixon. Yes, they propylene as the uh, side product. Uh, there is also menu to the contribution of contribution the uh, production of propylene. Okay, propylene as a side product because at refinery the FCC itself. Uh, the feed of the FCC usually uh, heavy gas oil uh, product from the vacuum vacuum distillation unit, if I'm not mistaken. And then the feed is a very heavy component, high viscous, uh, high viscous. And then the FCC is the profitable unit of operation or processing complex at refinery. Uh, as such. Okay. okay, propane dehydrogenation process. We know propane, C, uh, C, okay. three atom. So when we dehydrogenation, we remove uh, one hydrogen to be propylene. Uh, located uh, at least only one, only one, uh, one processing located at uh, Petronas NTB uh, giving. Okay. Uh, Fischer-Tropsch synthesis. Ah, uh, the famous one. Uh, if you learn, uh, if you learn pyrolysis, sorry. Sorry, no. If you learn uh, FTS from Dr. Zaki, your lecturer, uh, you will learn this process. However, uh, for Atlasia, sorry, Atlasia, uh, the shell middle distillate solution system uh, focus on the FTS system of GTL, gas to liquid. From syn gas, we convert it into liquid, uh, liquid, uh, liquid, liquid product, liquid petroleum product. Uh, like wax, uh, alkane, gasoline, folks the same. However, we can get the lead olefin production by using FTS using the uh, Fischer Trops, Fischer Trops catalyst, uh, FTO, two olefin catalyst, sorry, FTO catalyst, Fischer Trops, uh, two olefin catalyst. Uh. All right, another, another famous one is the methanol to olefin process. Uh, widely 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 constructed at china because the source of the uh, coal arang batu is quite high is quite uh, is quite high it's quite high at the china therefore the production of the methanol is uh, very large very large manufacture at china uh, from the coal we get uh, we get the syn gas synthetic gas Using uh, ATR, SMR, and so on. Okay. Olefin conversion unit, metathesis, C4, if I'm not sure, C4 dehydrogenation. Uh, yes. uh, at Lotte Chemical Titan, there's one OCU plant. However, currently it's not operated because the demand of the C4 still profitable. Therefore, uh, the OCU plant uh, uh, not running currently. We focus on sorry the Lotte Chemical Titan uh, initial plant focus on the butadiene, which is uh, one three butadiene derived from the mix C four, uh, still profitable. 
However, for a CEO or lifting commission unit, metathesis C4 become profiling. We uh, sorry, lotic chemical titan uh, not running currently. Okay. The next one, the famous one currently is the e cracker technology of ethylene. That's Dr. Zaki mentioned in the previous uh, previous session. The furnace itself using electrical electrical uh, electrical source instead of fuel gas in order to reduce amount of uh, carbon dioxide gas. Uh, however, the e cracker technology still uh, still under research uh, by Shell and if I'm not mistaken, Dow Dow Chemical. I forgot to it. But however, it's been initiative, initiative by Shell, Shell Chemicals, uh, still under R&D. However, the R&D itself is the pilot plant. Pilot. And then finally, is the oxidative dehydrogenation of ethane. You got the ethane, you remove one hydrogen, same to the PDH plant, uh, still uh, oxidative dehydrogenation. Okay. This uh, example of the processing technology, uh, in production of the light olefins, lah, mainly focus on the Italian also profiling. I hope uh, this uh, this slide, okay, this one slide, already open your mind towards the production of the uh, light olefins, which might be help in your plan design. Plan design one, plan design one, so I mean, plan design. Okay. All right. And then I show it to you. I show to you the light olefin plus in nature. Okay, previously I showed to you light olefin plus at, at low chemical titan. So in nature, uh, most of the light olefin plants located at the Semenanjung Malaysia, Malaysia Peninsula, for Sabah and Sarawak, as well as Labuan, uh, much more focused on the methanol production, as well as uh, MLNG plant at Bintulu. Same goes to the SMDS, Shell Media Distillate, GTL plant, the first GTL plant in the world, uh, located also at the Bintulu by Shell. So Sabah and Sarawak mainly focus on the oil and gas uh, exploration. Uh, oil and gas exploration. And also treating. Uh, treating. Okay. Uh, light olive plant in Malaysia for refinery. Okay. Hang your refining company at Port Eason. Okay, basically, Heng Yuan uh, already acquired the refi Port Dyson refinery previously from Shell, uh, Shell, Shell Malaysia. Uh, therefore, the technology, the technology of the uh, catalytic cracking or RF LRCC, long residue catalytic cracking from the Shell catalyst and technologies. Uh, for your information. Uh, since when, uh, Zakun? Yes. Since when, uh, Heng Yuan? Uh, uh, acquired uh, this from Shell? Uh, forgotten already. Maybe around 2016. 2016. Oh, okay. 2016. Right. That's why... Uh, uh, yeah. yeah okay. uh, that's why hmm. the workers from the this uh, Shell refinery go into the Lotte Chemical Titan as well as go into the Pengerang. As well as Singapore. Uh, Singapore also... There's a plenty lots of uh, chemical process like at uh, Jurong, Jurong and also Bukong, Pulau Bukong. Okay. Uh, and then Lotte Chemical Titan, Stream Chemical Complex, uh, FCC NAFTA, uh, and also LCU Metathesis. Uh, okay. Stream Chemical, Petrona Stream Chemical Complex at uh, Kerti, uh, Chemical Italian uh, using uh, Linde, Linde AG uh, technology. And then propane dehydrogenation unit by uh, Honeywell UOP licensor, license technology in Petronas Chemical MTBE. And then the biggest one currently at the PREF camp, Pengerang Refining and Petrochemical PREF camp, uh, steam, cracker, steam cracker complex using LAMUS technology. And then the famous one, RFCC uh, by Azen Solution from France. Okay. For your information also. Uh, why uh, why I mentioned FCC catalytic cracking is the profitable uh, unit of sorry profitable processing technology. So in Malaysia only one, two, and three three company already built this uh, this uh, uh, this process uh, this process. 
Okay. And then, why currently is less increasing demand in profiling? Why? Because due to COVID, most of the PPE made usually made from the PP polypropylene. Therefore, the demand of the propylene still increasing until uh, until nowadays. Uh, your cover set motor, your bumper, your car bumper still using polypropylene because when compared to the other polymers, the polypropylene still the strongest polymer compared to them. Okay. Okay. Uh, when we talk about steam packers, the production of ethylene compared to uh, propylene much more higher compared uh, much more higher. That's why the propylene production from the FCC we focus we only focus on the FCC. Okay. And as for propylene demand in 2020, polypropylene is the largest market. Largest market uh, and accounts for 68% of total propylene demand. Okay. Uh, okay, class. Okay, 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 student. When you do your plan design, try to get information, especially in economic aspect, from this IHS market. Yes. Normally, during my plan design time, I'm uh, I'm look at this uh, this website. However, it's uh, more paid version, paid version, paid report, paid version, paid version report. However, you may try. You may try get the information report uh, with the free access, uh, free access. Okay. Okay. Increasing demand in propane also. Uh, slight changes in FCC unit. Uh, although the propylene itself is the byproduct from the FCC, nowadays uh, when when the FCC at the refinery when they switch the catalyst, we they change the catalyst, they will boost the more propylene compared to gasoline, because uh, especially in Europe and USA, the gasoline demand uh, declining. But at least, uh, they switch into the electrical cars. So the gasoline demand for for vehicles uh, declining, but okay. And then uh, middle district diesel, eh? diesel, diesel market increasing both areas. Diesel usually is the pro, uh, another sorry, is one type of the petrol chemical. Uh, sorry, petroleum products from CDU food distillation unit. Uh, from the distillation unit, we go to diesel hydrotator. We treat. We treat the raw diesel become Euro 5 specs or uh, Euro 5 specs, uh, less sulfur. That's it. Uh, okay. And then US nitrogen crops that all use is increasing that produce more naphtha and less diesel. Okay. Shale crops, shale gas, shale, uh, shale location at the, during, at the petroleum production, petroleum exploration. The content of the shell oil uh, produce more naphtha and less diesel when when they feed it into the crude diesel unit. That's why uh, the naphtha is more produced than how they want to sell. They sold into the Asia market uh, because the Asia market is for distillate and petroleum coffee stock. Naphtha naphtha is the the main the main uh, feed for the petrochemical uh, complex, petrochemical industry, such as uh, cracker, cracker process. Okay, Middle East, Asia, India are building large integrated refinery or petrochemical complexes, like uh, at the uh, Pengerang, at the Prah camp. Yes, uh, it's integrated. Uh, the feed straightforward uh, received from the refinery uh, on time. When the refinery uh, have some upset, the petrochemical also upset. Maybe have some backup, but not uh, not longer, not longer backup. Okay. That's why the demand of the propylene still quite high until now. Okay. And then the growth of the NAFTA catalytic cracking. Uh, NAFTA catalytic. We're using the same technology as the uh, RFCC. Sorry, RFCC. However, we we change the catalyst. Okay, we change the catalyst 
we change the catalyst, the process is same, catalytic wrecking, uh, the, using zeolite, ZSM5. Uh, okay. And then, okay, the comparison between steam cracker and also catalytic cracking, when you are using the same fit, which is the NAFTA fit, when you're using uh, steam cracking, it's not selective to propylene. Uh, that's why the propylene to ethylene ratio around 0 0.55 until 0 0.68 ratio. Okay, while when we're using uh, NAFTA catalytic cracking, the propylene is selective, selected. That's why the P, P over E ratio around 1 to 2.4. Uh, that's why the demand when the demand of the propylene is still high, the most of the uh, petrochemical company like Lotte Chemical Corporation at Korea uh, select this catalytic cracking compared to steam cracking. Okay, student, understand why 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 the demand of the propylene is still high, and then why Lotte Chemical Corporation install. Or uh, uh, construct this catalytic cracking. Why, why I discuss to you? Because it's my previous plan. It is Lotte Chemical Titan, or uh, Titan Expansion Number Three project. Okay. PET project is targeting increasing propylene product as well as ethylene. Okay. Uh, using licensed technology from Kellogg Brown and Root, uh, catalytic or lifting technology. Uh, we call it as KCOT. And then using uh, FCC, uh, KBR auto flow, stack orientation. Okay, this uh, the, the head one is the uh, reactor section. And then the regeneration. Regeneration. Okay. Rising. Rising. Another FCC type is side by side. The regenerator and reactor is side to each other, bersebelahan, uh, side by side. However, due to uh, due to limitation of the land land area inside the Lotte Chemical Titan Pasir Gudang plant, uh, therefore Lotte Chemical Corporation from Korea selected this typical of uh, technology from KBR to be assembled and constructed at Titan Pasir Gudang. And then the plant itself, my previous plant called as the fluid dash NAFTA battery. Since we're using NAFTA uh, as well as C4, C5 feet, C4, C5 feet. And then finally, we get uh, uh, calculated, calculated propylene product around 125 kiloton per annum per year, while Italian 107 kiloton per, per year. Okay, Zako, okay. can you uh, share how, how tall is this uh, thing? <laughs> Okay, how tall is this thing? Uh, okay, how tall is this thing? Uh, later, later, I, I show to you. Okay, the, the right, right, okay. Okay, right. okay. Uh, why, why this Titan Expansion 3 project? Basically, we, okay, at the Lotte Chemical Titan, they combine this steam cracker. This one is steam cracker. Okay. Steam cracker. And then another one is FCC. NAFTA, uh, Petrochemical FCC. We combine, however, uh, we separate we separate the product. Uh, how you call it? Downstream separation still uh, still uh, differ to each other, to each other plant. However, the product like component such as hydrogen C1, C2 mixture, C2 mixture is sent to the NC2 coal box here. Uh, this one. The FNC also got the cold box. However, it's a smaller one. In order to, to overcome this uh, bottleneck, we send to the NC2 cold box for further processing. And then we get back, sorry, the, the FNC plant will get back this uh, C3, C3 feet from uh, C2, sorry, from C3 hydrogen generator from NC2 in order to produce our, pro, uh, our polymer grade propylene as well as hydrogen we're using uh, okay. this in integrated plant uh, integrated at the coal box plant and uh, okay if you learn uh, heat integration uh, pinch analysis yes 
this is the application of the pinch analysis at the uh, both uh, cool box in situ and also at NC. Okay, they are uh, this uh, 3D schematic, 3D, 3D drawing, 3D image of the plant. Uh, okay, okay, this one the FCC itself, the Kekok converter TR101. This bigger, <laughs> well, big mama, I call it big mama uh, during my past years at the Titan. Okay, uh, how long is uh, how long? Is around 80 meters. 80 meters. Uh, I think it was around eight story, eight story, eight story building. Yes, it's uh, it's very tough to climb up because we are using stairs. <laughs> it's very exhausted, <laughs> very penat uh, uh, to climb up until the the puncak here lah. Okay, it's a typical of FCC. Uh, through less catastrophic cracking. Okay. And then uh, this is uh, the erection, the erection itself. Uh, yes, bigger crane. Uh, as you can see here, the people here, there's tiny, <laughs> tiny people there. <laughs> uh, the, the erection time. Alhamdulillah, uh, it's safe. It was safe. Okay. Uh, okay, erection. Okay. Okay, I show you. Uh, this one is the quench oil. Eh? Quench oil. Quench oil tower. <laughs> quench oil tower. Uh, 3 T200. Okay, the, the name of the tower. Okay. Uh, and then finally, yes, the FNC plant. Full desk NAFTA cracker. Uh, the view from the NC2 call end section, or uh, if I'm not mistaken, at the uh, tower C2 stripper. Uh, stripper. Uh, 2T470. Okay, this one is the, sorry, okay, this one is the furnace, furnace for NC1, the first cracker complex at the Lotte Chemical Titan uh, Pasir Gudang plant, yes. Okay, and then, uh, okay. The cooling tower is very big, eh? Ah, yeah, <laughs> yes, doctor. Uh, okay, the, basically the cooling tower, okay, this is a big fan here, big fan here, okay. Is the cooling tower? Cooling is, this tower. is this called uh, also also considered super cooling tower, or is uh, just cooling tower? Uh, just cooling tower, yeah. Just okay. Okay. Cooling tower for NC two plant. However, this one for uh, FNC, and the cooling tower itself, both cooling tower and also all cooling tower all around the Pasir Gudang plant, uh, managed by the utility department. Uh, managed by utility department. Therefore, any any sudden increase temperature of the cooling water supply, sometimes sometimes the cooling water supply CWS is slightly high. We just okay, uh, just complain to the utility utility department in order they overcome the the the, uh, the root of cause of the problem. Okay, uh, the the red white the red white strip. Uh, this is column is there. C3 triple of FNC. Uh, FNC. I'm not sure uh, the picture. It's around high, around, uh, if I'm not mistaken, around 120 meters, including skirting. The, uh, yeah, including skirting with uh, number of uh, shift, shift tray or stages, around 131 stages, number of trays. Because the the separation between propane and propylene is almost not as a traffic mixture, but the boiling point is almost near to each other. Okay, <laughs> okay, and then this is the compressor house. This is the main air blower. Why why got the main air blower like a big air compressor? Because we want we want to fluidize the catalyst inside the FCC. That's why you're using main air blower, electrical supply. Uh, that's why the, <laughs> the cost of the electrical in this plant is quite high uh, because they're using the electrical generator. Uh, this time, when uh, before you left, uh, have a lot of invested on the coal generation plant? Uh, coal generation plant. Uh, 
may you elaborate it, Doctor? Cogen plant is actually uh, because co co cogeneration. Co yes, yes, co cogeneration. Uh. Okay, cogeneration plant, the new one located at here, Doctor. If you ask Hasib. Uh, uh, yes, uh, okay. that's, why, that's why I was okay. asking that question. <laughs> okay, okay. If you ask Asif, your 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 okay. The the new cogen plant uh, located here, uh, here. Uh, previously uh, known as the shadow waste shelter, mm. but, uh, shadow waste shelter, and then uh, the Lotte Chemical Titan uh, management decide to build uh, another cogeneration plant in order to back up the the utility steam supply, which is the high pressure steam. Medium mm -hmm. steam and also low pressure steam. Uh, okay. The, to require the demand of the each plant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. 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 Okay. And then that's it from me. Thank you, everybody. Good luck for your future endeavors. Oh, okay. Wait. Okay, okay. You need to describe about this picture. I I believe many <laughs> many want to talk about this. Okay. Okay. For your information, this picture is my my sweet memories during my construction, my plant construction time, uh, when I have been as as okay sorry, as an engineer or process technologist, uh, is my duty as an engineer also is my duty to check if installation of uh, tray, internal of tray installation inside the station column. So this is inside the uh, distillation column on yes, the tray. Yes. On the tray. Uh, yes. On the tray itself. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what, what, okay. what was the name of this tray? I forgot. Okay, okay. The tray itself, and I show is the valve tray, valve tray installation. Oh, valve tray. Okay. Okay. It's like the movement of your valve inside the engine. Mm. Uh, that's that's like like that. Uh. Usually, it's a shift tray. Uh, shift tray. It's like your strainer, mm. uh, tray, and another thing is uh, I forgot. Oh, yeah, that is so this is actually after okay. cleaning the tray, or it's a new tray? <laughs> it's a new, new uh, one. Tray. New so one that's uh, why I wonder. It's, it's like new. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's still shiny mm. when it's operated around one and two years. Mm. The tray itself will be coated with the lots of uh, oils. Mm -hmm. uh, liquid liquid component mm. yeah there will be dirty one ah. dirty mm. black and uh, slurry <laughs> mm. okay, okay yes 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 okay so you're done Zakun? okay i'm done all right thank you everybody all right uh, we hand over to doctor so okay thank you very much uh uh mr zakwan for your very very uh, informative and enriching sharing okay uh is it possible for me to upload this to i mean to share this video maybe in youtube or something I... <laughs> application because maybe maybe the student want to refer or other people want to refer and learn but it depends okay. on your permission uh all right uh for for video is okay i will for slide uh, maybe i will be I will be remove certain slide, and then uh, I will I will hand over to you, doctor, for your class. Oh, for 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 video is okay, but for slide, uh, okay, for slide, okay, then slide. I will I will wait for your slide. You can get okay. the F slide. For the yeah. video, uh, I may put it in my my YouTube for the students' <laughs> reference, lah. Sure, okay. sure. All right, okay. So, uh, thank you very much. I really appreciate your kind sharing. Okay, by the way, students, do you have anything to ask? I, I believe there are so many information there and then uh, maybe uh, some of it are very, very useful for you, your, your projects, for your assignment and so on. Uh, all, all of yeah. you are tired. <laughs> I mean, the speaker is also tired already. Uh, Ishad, Ishad, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I want to ask something. Okay, go okay. ahead. So, uh, my first question is, is there any... Um, poisoning catalyst happen, what the plant will do? I mean, okay. uh, did, does, do you need to shut down all the plant or maybe process upset, something like that? Okay. Yeah, that's the first question. Okay. Any second question? And, and the second question, um, 
I just wondering, why do you um already work in the industry and then go back to become a lecturer as an as an educator? Because I have met a few of people like uh, that do like this, goes to the industry, work for a few years, and then go back to educate, go go back to uh, being an, edu an educator. So I just wondering, is there any like negative thing happen inside the industry that makes you upset, and you decided to pursue your future in different kind of um area? So okay. that's all. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks, Ishan. Okay, over to you, Zakwan. Okay, that's a quite 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 interesting question. <laughs> Okay, first question first. Question number one first. First question, eh? Hmm. If any poison catalyst happen, okay, any upset, not what we will do with the plant. Okay. I win example the C2 hydrogenation reactor if the poison catalyst happen. Usually, uh, okay, usually when we, we know the, the poison inside, inside the system, when uh, the product, our Italian product, our Italian product got spread have amount of uh, acetylene. acetylene. Therefore, there be, must be poison occur at the reactor. What we will do, uh, we, the, uh, if the, the acetylene will be removed at the caustic tower, then we overcome it at the caustic tower solution. Okay. If the problem doesn't happen, when the catalyst already poisoned by the poison gas, we want we the pro, the plant will be switched to another reactor, which is the same by reactor. However, when we want to uh, when we want to switch to the standby reactor, we need to regen back, regen back the standby reactor in order to activate the catalyst. Regen means regeneration, regeneration. Yes, regeneration the the standby reactor. We we want to activate the Catalyst inside the standby reactor. So how do you regenerate? Is it by putting steam or what? Okay, or there's a, there's several steps. If I'm not mistaken, the first one is the heating process. Heating using nitrogen gas uh, at uh, 300 degrees Celsius, and then we, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we activate the catalyst by injecting the dimethyl disulfide (DMDS) dimethyl disulfide. Uh, in my case, uh, in my case, uh, in my case. We inject with the diameter dioxide, and then uh, we get the temperature, get the spec. When we spec the 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 influent gas from the reactor, from the region gas, uh, got the spec for ppm for if not mistaken, the sulfide the sulfide content, the sulfide content is enough. Then we then we okay, we try to parallel the stage. Okay. For regen, for regen, doctor, for your information to all of you, regen cell uh, has several steps. Regen usually we we already use that reactor, we extract it, we done the regeneration. We regeneration using the nitrogen heating, and then nitrogen plus steam, and then we inject with hydrogen in order to burn all impurities inside the reactor. Uh, that's the region step. The thing step is different. Okay. Not that question. Okay, plan what we'll do. Usually when regeneration, usually we didn't we didn't shut down the plant unless uh, the major the major upset happened at the caustic wash tower overflow overflow into the reactor system or dry system. Yes. That we will shut down the total of the plant. Okay. The I guess okay with the answer. Uh, hopefully, it's, it's the answer. All right. The second one. Why I change the profession? Okay. It's all about your passion. It's all about your profession, your future dream profession. You want to be an educator or lecturer. You focus on it. Uh, okay. Another thing is uh, why I work in the industry. I want to expose myself with the uh, industry experiences, and then later I will be use that the your priceless amount of uh, experience to share with the students. Uh, that's uh, the the perfect way or creative way in thinking and learning. Because normally 
like in polytechnic eh? okay i dis uh, i talk in polytechnic uh in polytechnic we focus on the hands on which is uh, you use any tools and any any outdoor work uh, therefore i normally i love to do the uh, the outdoor work you work with the tools and so on uh, like vessel like pump and so on and also the valve the gate valve glove valve uh hand, handly operated handly dismantled uh, i love to teach to the student on about that okay why you change the profession is my dream it's my my passion to be uh educator one and finally i got the got the chance i follow it even though yes the the pay the payment is not enough i heard in the as an engineer, sorry, uh, what I have in, in, in yes, the payment of the education is not high enough compared to the engineer stuff. <laughs> is it correct, though? <laughs> yeah, depends, uh, depends on which area industry you are in. Yes, uh, yes, correct, correct. When at a petrochemical or oil and gas, yes, the payment is quite high. Plus, with your bonus, quarterly bonus, yes, easy to get the five figure, five figure amount. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you uh, for answering that. Okay, guys, maybe we take one more question because it's nearly five o'clock. Okay, if there is any question. Uh. Thank you, Isha. Thank you. Anybody else? If there is any question, last call. Uh, hello, Mr. Zakwan. Yes. Uh, I want to ask about uh, what kind of fuel did you guys use in the furnace? Fuel. Uh, Ah uh, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, fuel use. Okay, uh, fuel use for what? Uh, the burner system in the furnace or the feed of the furnace? Uh, the burner system, like to okay. uh, to do the thermal cracking thing. Okay, uh, in the furnace system that I have explained in previous uh, session. Okay, usually at Lotte Chemical Titan Stream Cracker Complex, they're using the fuel gas. Fuel gas, eh? Fuel gas, fuel gas, uh, fuel gas as a burner. Means you mean natural gas, right? Yes, yeah, slightly, slightly natural gas, but the composition is uh, more on the uh, C1, methane rich gas. The one you, 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 uh, you, you create yourself or you purchase from uh, Gas Malaysia? Uh, okay, the fuel gas uh, is the byproduct from the, the downstream of the cracker complex. Uh, okay, so it's your in-house gas, right? Yeah, in-house. Okay, 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 okay. All right. Now, natural, natural gas usually as a backup for the gas turbine at the mm -hmm. cogen plant, as well as uh, if the fuel gas uh, had the pressure down, yes, we back up with the natural gas. Mm. So basically, because you have the fuel gas, then hence you are not using natural gas that you that is uh, normally purchased uh, i mean normally so, uh, sell by uh, gas malaysia lah, because you have so you are using the gas malaysia natural gas as backup only right yes yes correct mm. because the price of the natural gas is quite expensive <laughs> if i'm not mistaken when i'm when my time at, as an engineer uh. uh yes uh mm, but there are pro and cons lah, okay. Uh, so, point, yeah. uh, so because uh, we use uh, natural gas or in your case fuel gas because it's cleaner compared to the light fuel oil or gasoline yes, yes. or diesel or whatever oil. So that's cleaner, uh, right? Okay. Okay. However, for FCC, FCC at my previous uh, fuel gas nafta, nafta cracker complex plant, uh, they use the full oil. They will use the full oil as a burning. Uh, as a burning. Okay. So, okay. Hope, hope that answers. Okay. Uh, it's nearly five o'clock. So uh, everybody want to take some rest before breaking fast. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, is it uh, nearly, what time is it there in Kuching? Uh, okay. It's already almost 5 p.m. Oh, okay. Uh, Same. Okay. So, okay. But then your breakfast uh, time? Uh, Asa prayer previously around 3.56, already one hour after Asa time. Okay. So okay. 
Baik, first time around 6.44. Okay, so we need to release you. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Thanks. Hey, you want to you want to meet meet with me, Zakun? Ah, ini Dr. Mazura ni. Hi, Zakun. Hello, Doctor. <laughs> Live from Kuching. Huh? Apa dia? Live version. Live version. <laughs> okay, dah habis dah kan? Ah, dah habis dah. Dah, dah. Okay, we are going to close. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, uh, on behalf of the class, okay, I would like to express our deepest gratitude to okay, uh, Mr. Zakuan for kindly sharing the many things. Okay, many things uh, he has shared. Uh, I. I, I was really hoping to have a different kind of version, different perspective. That's, that's why I uh, invited uh, Mr. Zakwan. So I hope you guys, the students, okay, you 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 benefited from this, okay. And uh, if you realize, I, I didn't give you anything to do this week because uh, for you to focus for your test as, as well as the, the easy test yeah, as well as uh, relax a bit lah, okay. Uh, okay, so uh, so I'll after this I'll give you some assignment. Okay, so then after the semester break, you will be fresh and uh, energetic to do more things. All right. Okay, so that's it for the class. Thank you very much. Okay, once again, thank you, uh, Mrs. Okay, Zakwa. Thank okay, you. Thanks to the rest. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, till then, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Good afternoon. Uh, selamat berbuka puasa. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you, Zakwa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Mrs. Zakwa. Thank you, Thank you, Dr. and Mr. Zakwa. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Mr. Zakwa. Thank you, Dr. Thank you.